we want to use the Laplace transform to solve the differential equation involving the Heaviside function, u of the quantity t minus one. Let's begin with a quick review. The procedure for using the Laplace transform to solve a linear constant coefficient ODE is to number one, apply the Laplace transform to both sides of the differential equation to transform the equation into an algebraic equation in the frequency domain S. Number two, we perform substitution with any initial conditions. Number three, we solve the equation for big X of S. And number four, we take the inverse Laplace transform to determine X of T. Partial fraction decomposition may be required. So going back to our example, again, the first step is to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. On the left, we have the inverse Laplace transform of X double prime at minus X. And the inverse Laplace transform of X double prime, referring to our notes on the right, is equal to S squared times big X of S minus X times X of zero minus X prime of zero. And then we have minus the Laplace transform of X, which is big X of S. On the right, to determine the Laplace transform, we need to apply the shifting property shown here below, where the Laplace transform of F of the quantity T minus A times U of the quantity T minus A equals e to the power of negative as times the Laplace transform of f of t. So because we have u of the quantity t minus one, we know a is equal to one. However, notice f of the quantity t minus one is the function t squared minus one, which is not in the form where we can easily determine f of t, which we need on the right. And therefore, we perform a change of variables. So to set this up, we let f of the quantity t minus one equal t squared minus one. And then we introduce a new variable, we'll call that tau, where tau is equal to t minus one, and therefore t equals tau plus one. Next, we determine f of tau. So to determine f of tau, we replace t in f of the quantity t minus one with tau plus one, which gives us a square of tau plus one minus one. Simplifying, we have f of tau equals tau squared plus two tau. This is the function we need for the right side of our shifting equation. And the reason this works is because if we determine f of tau minus one, by replacing tau of tau minus one on f of tau, we do get tau squared minus one, which is the same function on the right, f of the quantity t minus one, just with a different variable. So applying the shifting property on the right, the Laplace transform of the quantity t squared minus one times u of the quantity t minus one is equal to e to the power of negative as because a is equal to one, and then we have times the Laplace transform of f of tau. For the next step, we substitute the initial conditions on the left, and we'll also find the Laplace transform of f of tau on the right. Since x of zero equals one and x prime of zero equals two, the left side simplifies to s squared times big X of s minus s minus two minus big X of zero equals, on the right, the Laplace transform of f of tau, which is equal to tau squared plus two tau, is two divided by s cubed, plus two times one over s squared, or two divided by s squared. For the next step, we solve for big X of s. To do this, we will add s to both sides, add two to both sides, and then factor big X of s from the left. This gives us big X of s times the quantity s squared minus one equals e to the negative s times two divided by s cubed, plus two divided by s squared, plus s plus two. Next, we multiply both sides by one over the quantity s squared minus one which gives us big X of S equals e to the negative S times two divided by the product of S cubed and the quantity S squared minus one plus two divided by the product of S squared and the quantity S squared minus one. And then we have plus the quantity S plus two divided by the quantity S squared minus one. Before we take the inverse Laplace transform on both sides of the equation though, we do have to perform a partial fraction decomposition on each of the three fractions on the right. I'm not gonna show that work here due to time, but the result of the partial fraction decomposition is shown below. In the first set of parentheses on the right, notice we have one divided by the quantity s plus one, and then minus one divided by the quantity s plus one, and therefore those two quotients simplify out, giving us the result below. And now the right side is in the form where we can take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation and determine x of t on the left. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, here we have the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. We know on the left, the inverse Laplace transform of big X of S is equal to X of T, which is what we're looking for, which is equal to the inverse Laplace transform on the right. 
let's break the right side into two parts. Well, one part is the part involving the product involving e to the negative s, and the second part is the sum of the remaining two products. And now let's focus on the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s times the quantity negative two divided by s minus two divided by s cubed minus two divided by s squared plus two divided by the quantity s minus one. To determine this inverse Laplace transform, we need to apply the shifting property that we applied earlier. Notice if we take the inverse Laplace transform on both sides of the equation, we would have f of the quantity t minus a times u of the quantity t minus a equals the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative a s times the Laplace transform of f of t. Well right now inside the parentheses we have big F of s, which means we need to determine the inverse Laplace transform of this function to determine our function f of t, which we need for the right. I've shown this work on the far right in blue, where we have big F of s, and therefore f of t is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of big F of s, which gives us f of t is equal to negative two minus t squared minus two t plus two e to the t. So now we can replace big F of s with the Laplace transform of f of t, giving us the Laplace transform of negative two minus t squared minus two t plus two times e to the t. And now we can solve for x of t. On the left, the inverse Laplace transform of big X of s is equal to x of t. On the right, the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s times the Laplace transform of negative two minus t squared minus two t plus two e to the t, again applying the shifting property, is equal to f of the quantity t minus one times u of the quantity t minus one. To find f of the quantity t minus one, we replace t in f of t with t minus one, which gives us the quantity negative two minus the square of t minus one, plus two times the quantity t minus one, plus two times e to the power of t minus one, and then times the heavy side function u of the quantity t minus one. And then we have plus the inverse Laplace transform of negative one half times one divided by the quantity s plus one, plus three halves times one over the quantity s minus one. Which if we go to our table and apply the last formula in the first column, for one over s plus one, a is equal to one, giving us minus one half e to the negative t, and then for a one divided by the quantity s minus one, a would be negative one, giving us plus three halves times e to the t. So this is our solution, but let's go ahead and simplify it. If we square t minus one and distribute two and simplify, the final result is x of t equals the quantity negative one minus t squared plus two times e to the power of t minus one times u of the quantity t minus one minus one half e to the negative t plus three halves e to the t. I hope you found this helpful.